Hi guys, Rob Coxie here, and today I'm talking about none other than the Battlefield 1 stream from Sunday's EA Play event. After the original reveal trailer and a follow-up gameplay trailer that Cynics quickly dismissed as cutscenes, we were treated to an hour of live gameplay and some incredibly awkward interviews with confused celebrities baked off their gourd. Special highlights included Snoop Dogg sparking up a doob live on stream. This footage all over the internet now, and tons of people are going to be breaking down frame by frame runs of the video to find every little treat DICE has at this pre alpha stage of the game, but I'm going to be throwing out my opinions, what I love and what I don't like about the reveal as a player and as an avid fan of the franchise. The map we were treated to is the St. Quentin Scar, one of four maps currently revealed. The other three on the Battlefield.com website are listed under the Maps section. They are Empire's Edge, Monte Grappa, and Amiens. St. Quentin is the site of a German offensive on a British position, so naturally we'll be playing the Bosch and the Tommies. Good to finally see Britain returning to the battlefield after a lengthy, decade-long absence since Battlefield 2 Euro Force. Destruction's back to bad company levels. Throughout the stream, we saw an immaculate French village blown to kingdom come, and it looks spectacular. Thrown together with Battlefield 1's new dynamic weather, that's right, finally, the map looks absolutely bloody gorgeous in sunlight, through rain and fog, each changing the map up tactically. No more long lines of sight, slick mud, and difficult ground attack conditions for planes. Checkpoints seem spaced out nicely, although the sense of scale still seems a lot smaller compared to the likes of Battlefield 2 slash Battlefield 2 114. I look forward to seeing what other maps will be available and shown off before release. As many of us have feared, bolt actions are rare as all fuck. They seem to be consigned to the scout slash sniper class alone, which is a bit of a bummer, although I'm completely understanding that this is Battlefield gameplay with World War I-era-ish weapons. It's authenticity over realism. We've already had a few casuals like X Factor Gaming moan that the earliest SMGs known to man aren't 100% accurate up to 300 meters, but scrubs are gonna scrub. Glad to see there's a bit of balance to the weapon classes, so I'm hoping that they're not fixed, air quotes, by player feedback. There's a small variety of weapons available to see so far, two or three per class primary at the moment, from car 98s and Lewis guns, trench guns, to the trusty Lee Enfield SMLE, and a couple of presets per weapon. The Enfield seemingly included a sharpshooter preset, as well as more of an aggressive recon sort of loadout. I can't wait to get my hands on some of these, and especially some of the more advanced customization options once they're unlocked. As for secondaries, we've seen the C96 Carbine for the Pilot Tanker class, the only weapon they have available, and the 1911, used by pretty much everybody else. Hopefully we'll see the Mauser, the Luger, the Webley Revolver, and maybe Browning handguns amongst others. There were plenty of options and advancements during World War I, so plenty of opportunity for different hand cannons. Plenty of people have pointed out that the new Battlefield gameplay would have suited a World War II setting more, which I am inclined to agree with. Automatic weapons were a lot more common in the 30s and 40s, and I absolutely loved those theatres of war and the vehicles available in that setting. Fingers crossed that's next on DICE's list of ideas. We've seen horses and motorbikes in the trailers, and it's going to be fun to see them implemented, but for now, we've only got to see armoured cars, tanks, emplacements, planes, and fucking zeppelins in action. I'm a little concerned about the vehicle selection, although hoping this is purely a pre-alpha sort of thing. The armoured car, being the same for both sides, is bristling with guns. The Renault FT is a speedy single-seater tank packing a tasty punch. The Mark IV is the medium tank packing a Lewis gun for the driver and two six-pounders on the sides. And the German A7V is essentially a giant mobile machine gun nest. It's fucking ridiculous, and I love it. We've seen a few emplaced machine guns around the map, a few AT guns kicking about and the like, but so far no artillery. Will it be a commander asset, which they haven't really confirmed will be in the game? Or will it be in-map, usable weapons for bombing slash gas shelling? Air combat looks fun, although the vehicles spawn like Battlefront. You know, you spawn as a pilot and you come flying into the map already. There's no walk over to the plane, jump in, take off. You're going to have to have your teammates spawn on you, which is a little weird and they might not even do it. Anyway, that's going to trigger some hardcore fans' casual radar. Animations for entering slash exiting vehicles and changing positions within the vehicles are finally in Battlefield and look amazing. I think included now is a shot of a... Biplane pilot jumping into the rear gunner seat to shoot down an enemy plane. Look at that! That's something we've wanted for a goddamn long time, and we finally have it. We also finally get round to the Zeppelin, the behemoth. Called in for the losing team to tip the scales and change the tide of battle, it's capable of bombing runs and laying down heavy machine gun fire. 
but it's also a giant target for planes and AA. Once destroyed, the Zeppelin slowly burns and crashes to the ground, causing immense damage below. Wreckage left behind remains around of the whole match, and that damn thing's fully manoeuvrable. Think 2142 Titans. Excellent. Finally. Very happy to hear this. Every crash and burn looks absolutely spectacular, better than any scripted event I've seen so far in Battlefield 4. Plenty of players in the team, in the stream I mean, stopped watching in awe and just watched it nosedive in each match. That's how it should be, and that's how I see it being in every game we play. While the UI seems to be kind of placeholder, or at least just borrowing heavily from Battlefront, same typeface, same clear minimalist aesthetic and colours, it genuinely seems fitting for the Battlefield franchise. I'm not a fan of clutter or weird typefaces used in UI design, so the clean sans serif approach is making me pretty satisfied in a shut the fuck up you goddamn design nerd sort of way. I imagine a few things will change between now and release, but honestly I wouldn't really bother, don't mess with perfection. The neat round map slash compass is a decent throwback to most World War II shooters so I'm happy to see that sort of design return as well. The announcer lady feels very out of place however. In a heavily contested match, I don't see her becoming anything more than a source of headaches, and her incredibly docile English accent just makes me think she's a Titan OS, spilling over from Titanfall 2's reveal. I'm not the only one who wants a soothing, sexy English voice in my ear for Titan AI, am I? That's why I picked Jeeves last time. A few people have shown distaste for the UI design, but honestly, Battlefield really is one of those games where less is more. As always, DICE's audio department is completely on point. Every gun sounds beefy, sounds damaging, sounds brutal. Explosions and bullet impacts are about as impactful as you'd imagine, and the Soldier VO feels authentic. The bayonet charges a brutal roar, and the impact sound and animation absolutely beautifully disturbing to look at. I look forward to seeing some proper melee combat. The stream seemed to only capture the victims only, and no decent animations for it and the bellowing klaxon signifying an approaching zeppelin is just stunning. The music so far sounds great thematically, heard near the end of rounds and in the spawn menu. I just really want to hear the battlefield theme and the sound effects with war tapes for added oomph. The gameplay was a primary concern for a lot of people, gamers and EA money men alike, and honestly I think they've nailed it. It's still Battlefield, very run and shooty sort of players will feel right at home, while a few vets may feel a little bit disheartened. I mean I know I'm still waiting for another 1942 as well, with you know, a lot more in terms of bolt action rifles rather than everybody running around with assault rifles and SMGs. But considering I had my gripes with Battlefield 4, but still have managed to waste a thousand hours of my life on that, means I'll probably do the same thing with Battlefield 1. There's just something about Battlefield, the way it plays, the way it looks, the way we can now squad up with friends and stick together throughout matches, throughout actual rounds. It's perfect, it's multiplayer chaos, and that I find completely unrivaled within the FPS genre. While plenty of liberties have been taken with the source material, it's shaping up to be the equivalent of a Michael Bay World War I film, but with actual substance. I'll be working on as much Battlefield 1 content as possible come the beta and release, including plenty of multi-perspective squad play videos thanks to many of my friends now rocking recording software too. So if you're a fan of Battlefield 1 and a fan of teamwork, communication and coordination, or the occasional complete fuster cluck, click that sub button, I will love you forever.